Hello and welcome back to another Minecraft video. Today is a little bit of an... Uh, today I'm going to go into a bit of lore ideas I have about Minecraft and certain block types. And so, you know, why don't we just jump right in? So today I'm going to be discussing Skulk. What, it, what could it be? What could it be made of? What, um... What, uh, what, if any, real-life counterparts does it have? Um, so let's begin. So first off, we have the Skulk Sensor. It is sensitive to sound vibrations. Meaning, you can do cool stuff, and let me... Grab some pressure plates, or rather trap doors, some wool... And I already have a skulk sensor in my inventory, so let's uh, let's this first go over what a skulk sensor is, what it does, how it can be used. I have a short little d display over here of each of the blocks. We're not going to worry about this right now. This is more towards the end of the video. Let's just get over here, and I will show you what you can do. Well, what's commonly known as wireless redstone. Um, Here's an example of a clock you can make. There we go. Here's a simple long pulse tick. Uh, wireless redstone contraption. This is an example of how a skull sensor can be used. It basically detects vibrations, converts the, the vibration signal into a redstone signal, which then can be uh, relayed if you set it up correctly with the use of trap doors. Um, there is a delay. There's a slight delay between um, 
not instantaneous, but it's close. So if you wanted something to like repeat a signal every so often, uh, but you didn't want that signal like interfering, you could create a, a system like this to create a, uh, Yeah, I think this pretty much explains itself. You can create wireless redstone through use of skulk sensors. Now, do skulk sensors have any sort of, uh, let me just... Does the skulk sensor have any uh, real life counterparts? The short answer, if you're talking organic, I don't know. I'm not a biologist. But if you're talking mechanical, yes, the skull does, the sensor does have a. Uh... Well, it has sort of a counterpart. There are what's known as audio, uh, audio pickups which are basically microphones, which will just output a signal. Um, which are basically like little microphones that just output a signal and require very, no, limited to very little energy input. Now let's go on to, well, first I'll have to, next up in line is the Skull Catalyst. The Skull Catalyst is a block that when you place it down and activate it through, let's say, killing a mob. Uh, let's grab what, a, let's just grab a sword. If you kill a mob near it, and I know killing an axolotl, yuck, disgusting, what kind of monster are you? This is for demonstration purposes. I thought I was grabbing a pig spawn egg. Uh, yeah. Let's just go with that reason. Um. Basically, what it does is it causes Skulk to spread. Every time, instead of dropping EXP, that EXP goes into the Skulk and becomes the Skulk. If that makes sense. The animation, let's give slash give. The bloom effect. Oh, and yeah, Debug Stick can do this, uh, but that's going to be a completely different episode. Uh, the blue, when a, whenever you kill a mob, the 
uh, Skulk essentially blooms, and I think it acts like more like... I think the best analogy for this would be an algae. Um, would be algae. Very thick algae. Because... Or peat. Algae or peat moss. Something between the two. Um... And what it does is its job is to spread the skulk. Cause skulk catalysts are designed to spread skulk uh, everywhere. It basically, skulk is like the, um, well, it's basically like an infection. Uh, yeah. Anyways, it infests the world in deep, dark areas. And, well... Yeah. Next up is the Skulk Shrieker. No, the Skulk Shrieker does not have any analogs in, uh, in real life. But what its job to do is to summon a warden. Wardens are a force of nature. They are constructed via... They essentially... Skulk is also like the congealed biomatter of whatever you kill. So in a sense, whenever you summon the warden, you're summoning, it basically makes a construct out of that congealed, dead, rotting biomatter that it's feeding on. The skulk block. Is very mushy, as you can probably tell by its sound effect. It's a very mushy block. Um, my guess is basically it's just, it's just congealed matter of the dead thing surrounded by skulk, which the skulk feeds upon. So it's a mix between like a, uh, I guess, slime mold, which isn't really mold, it's a protist, but uh, slime mold uh, essentially. My guess is it's like a slime mold thing, like it's a semi-intelligent slime mold, and the warden is a is a, is its version of self-defense. Man, I gotta build with Skulk more often. I kinda like the block. When Skulk spreads, as you can probably tell, that looks like bow. So that, the Skulk Catalyst is kind of like the heart Anyways, uh, yeah. So, now let's get into the scientific -y hypothetical areas that, and murky waters, as it were. What could Skulk be? Or what, how would such a thing evolve? I mean, clearly it's using, the Minecraft has a mechanic, and souls themselves, have, the use of souls and stuff is clearly well understood in Minecraft. Um... For instance, the totems was undying, I theorized, used to utilize the souls of villagers trapped inside to uh, give a regeneration effect. It's just like gas tears. Gas tears in some, some uh, actually, game theories have been said to be the crystallized souls of the dead. Um, and they have regeneration effects. In this case, what I'm thinking, the regeneration effect isn't to the player, but to the skulk. Whenever you kill something, its soul goes into the skulk. Essentially, it's like a gray goo scenario where the skulk essentially consumes that soul, uses that energy to replicate more of itself and regenerate, or rather generate, not regenerate, there, and uh, invasively spread throughout the world. 
that is that is what I'm going with. Is it correct? I don't know. Does it seem plausible? Uh, does it seem plausible? Uh, perhaps. Again, much of Minecraft's lore is hidden by the rules. I think the only people in the world who really know what's going on are the creators, or it's Notch. Um, probably the high ranking dev team. And then some of the game design. I think they're the only real people who know. Okay, let's head to the nether real quick. We're heading to the nether. Anyways, without further ado, let's talk about the weirdest sculpt block. By far, the weirdest sculpt block has to be the sculpt veins. Usually when a skulk is invading, if you've noticed that the full skulk block always, block always spawns. Skull block always spawns with um surrounded by skull veins, which is why I think it's a slime ball or something akin to a slime ball. Because slime molds consume objects by essentially enveloping them. Uh. And let me demonstrate by, uh, again, let's grab chicken, for instance, a sculpt catalyst, and a sword. As you can see, when I killed the chicken, I did not get any XP. However, what spread, and I guess it's not depicted here, but what's, what I think is happening is it sends out little tendrils, consumes the area with the dead matter, and that sinks into the ground as it chases the food and blood and whatever, all that good, good, good matter down into the ground, converting the blocks, these blocks, into skull. And then it searches around for more, uh, more prey to eat. That is my, that is my, my just analysis. Anyways, folks, if you found this video intriguing and you want to know, want to, want me to do more videos like this in the future, why not consider smashing that like button, subscribing, and hitting the notifications bell so you're notified every time I uh, upload a video. I, I generally upload two videos a day. I don't, um, I typically won't do more than that, unless of course I've pre-recorded a bunch of videos, in which case you'll have a lot of stuff to watch for the adventure. Leisure. Um, Let's take some, let's take some stuff. While I'm taking this down, I'm just gonna say that the uh, map development for 
portion of stuff that I'm going to be doing is going to be, uh, I guess, going into overdrive because there's a lot that I wanted to want to implement, and currently I've been recording me implementing things, and I'm going to be doing a lot of stuff off camera from now on as well. Um, it's mainly going to involve loot tables. Uh, but anyways, without further ado, this wraps this about this about wraps up the video. If you have any questions or want to request a video topic, why not consider consider leaving a suggestion in the uh, comment section. I will re review it and um, see if I can put together anything uh, on that topic and on that subject. As for if you enjoyed the video, yes, as I've stated many times earlier, please consider subscribing. If you want to follow me, follow um, the development of my uh, Minecraft map and not just watch me play the Minecraft map, map then uh, consider going to my channel page and favor saving the YouTube, the playlist that I have for development side of things but if you but if I vice versa if you want to um, if you want to for instance watch just me playing the map and not be bothered by watching all the nitty gritty technical details and development videos then uh, I have the let's play playlist which as time goes on, I will be um, switching to the new maps periodically as each update comes out. So there won't be like, uh, um, and I'll usually set back to a previous quest or at least try to uh, rebeat the game uh, and get back to where I was prior to switching. And that's actually in the game things I can do that I could cheat it in, but I want to do it a little bit more legitimately, legitimately than just cheating it in. Anyways, uh, I think this video has gone on for long enough. As always, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.